The Jim Dogs enjoy an off week as they get ready to head to the SEC Championships. All the highlights are next. And the Dogs' deed is done. What can I say? They were the best. They really stood out. They put it all together that count, and that's what the sport's all about. What a routine. And that just may do it for Georgia here tonight. Wow. The Jim Dog Show is brought to you by Melwood Springs. Melwood Springs, from the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Georgia. Hi, I'm Suzanne Yachlin. Welcome to the Jim Dog Show. Joining me today, as always, is Associate Head Coach Jay Clark. We are headed into the SEC Championships, which will be held on March 25th in Birmingham at the Birmingham Convention Center. If this is a big competition as Georgia will be going for their 15th SEC title. We're finishing up a regular season of being undefeated at 15-0, and and we're currently ranked not only number one in the country, but number one on every single event. So we are ready to go to the SEC Championships. What do you think, Jay? Well, I'm, you know, I don't know whether being number one on everything is a blessing or a curse sometimes, but it certainly has been a motivating factor for our team all year long to go undefeated and to try and maintain that number one status throughout the season. Um, you know, heading into the championships, I think we're pretty confident, particularly coming off the way we did it in Michigan. Um, probably our most complete effort to date uh, in terms of putting all four events together. And so we feel pretty confident, and the team team seems to be doing well. They've had a little bit of rest, and we're, we're kind of getting gearing back up for SEC. So I feel pretty good about it. I do, too. And just to recap what Jay's already said, we're just coming off two road competitions against Utah and Michigan where we posted scores of above 197 points. As a matter of fact, in Michigan had our season high, so that's a great way to go into the SEC championships. And Jay alluded to the break we had, a little spring break for the girls, and they're rested and ready to go. So we are anxious to get this thing going. As I said, it'll be March 25th in Birmingham, and tickets are still available. So we want our fans to get out there and cheer on the dogs as we're going for our 15th SEC title. Now, one year ago, we were going into the championships ranked fourth in the SEC right, right. and ended up winning. Uh, do it's you remember so, that meet? Absolutely. <laughs> and it's certainly a much different feeling this year. It's hard to believe that it's been that long since we were uh, in that situation. It was a very unfamiliar situation to us, but one that this that team sort of sort of relished and sort of rallied behind. This is certainly a different position as we come in, probably the prohibitive favorite to win this year, and, uh, and so it's just a little bit of a different approach. It is. It's so different, but you know, I can't help but talk about last year when talking about this year because I feel like our team sort of started this season right where we left off last year. You know, we were the come-behind team, winning the SEC from the fourth seed, winning the national title from the twelfth seed, from worst to first. We come back this season and we started right where we left off. And one of the factors that played into in our winning the national title last year was the fact that we had three all-around gymnasts that finished in the top six in the country. And that was huge. They were uh, Ashley Kupat, Kelsey Erickson, and Katie Heenan all finished in the top three last year for us. And they're all back this year. And right now we're going into the SEC Championships with four all-arounders all ranked relatively high, three of them ranked in the top ten in the country. Let's start talking about those all around and start off with, with Courtney Kupetz. Well, you got to start with her. It does start with her. Even as a freshman, though, she's made probably the most impact of any freshman in a long, long time in this sport, not just at Georgia. And certainly being number one ranked on every event is, is a big part of that. Uh, you know, the all around is such a big thing for so many kids when they first come into college. and. And, uh, but Courtney really has not been possessive of that in any way, and that's what's been so nice about working with her and, and the way that she's owned college gymnastics this year is that she's done it very unassuming, very humble, and it's just been a pleasure and a joy to watch her succeed, and she certainly is leading the charge right now. She is, and talk about the all-around. You know, we don't ever talk about it on our team. We just say, you know, whoever's in the top six competes, and if you end up in the top six on every event, then you end up doing all four events. But you have to give Courtney credit when credit's due. I mean, she's won the all-around competition in the last seven meets that she's been in and has broken already some of Georgia's records that, you know, are, are, are really high records in terms of 9.9. She's scored more 9.9s. Uh, than almost anyone in the history of Georgia. I think Corey Fritzinger was the only other freshman that scored a lot of 9.9s, and Courtney's already beaten that record, and she just is, is pushing for the all-time 9.9 record, which Karen Litchie holds at 42. She's, as I said, Courtney's got 
29. So she's unbelievable. Ranked uh, uh, in the top three on uneven bars, your Absolutely. event. Yeah, she's number one on that event, as a matter of fact. And, and it's just been nice to watch how she methodically has gone about her business. If you look at her scores, they're very indicative of the way she has steadily and methodically improved and gotten a little bit better at the, the finer things, really trying to hone in on the, on the little things to really maximize her scoring potential. And she's done it all year long, and it's, it really has not taken a step back. She's just the model of consistency. She really is, and she's really just sharpened up everything in the last couple weeks, sticking more vaults. On vaulting right now, she's also ranked, she's ranked number one or two in the country on every single event, and that's just phenomenal from a freshman. So she's shown consistency everywhere, and her scores are just getting better and better as she's sticking, and that's what you want to do in the postseason. So, again, Courtney is definitely leading the charge for us, and then our other all-arounder, we've got three others, believe it or not, Kelsey Erickson and Katie Heenan, which are both ranked in the top ten in the all-around, and Kelsey's been ranked in the top three on an even bars the entire season. Absolutely. She's she's uh, finished second last year at the, at the NCAA championships on that event. Certainly probably one of her strengths, although she really doesn't have a weakness anywhere, and has volunteered to be in the leadoff spot on balance beam and, and some other things. Uh, she plays a very significant leadership role in that area as well. She's just been unbelievable. She's our starter on balance beam as well, and Kelsey starts us out, and I'll tell you, when she starts out with a strong beam routine, there is no stopping our beam team. We are right up there with a 49.3 plus team score, which is what you want to score to win a championship, and Kelsey is, is our leader on beam, our start-off performer. She's added a new skill this year on floor exercise, a, a full in, a full twisting right. double back on floor, so she's continu continuing to upgrade her routines, which is great from a junior, right. and... Uh, She's just been, been super, and we're looking for a lot of leadership from her going into the championships. Uh, next, Katie Heenan. Katie Heenan. Katie, I, I kid with Katie and call her the bull. Katie is probably the kid that we, we depend on the most in terms of the absolute numbers that she does throughout the year. She's competed the all-around more than anybody else this year and last year. Very dependable, very durable. You know what you're going to get from Katie every time. Every time she sets foot on the floor, she's going to go somewhere between 39.4 and 39.6. And, and that, that's just that you can't replace that kind of consistency and that kind of durability and that kind of dependability. And Katie, not only in that way, but she's just such a great leader, a, a good character kid in the gym that does exactly what we ask of her. Is never really a coaching problem at all and never gives us any attitude and just right. a joy to be around. I look at Katie as, you know, just the, the ambassador from our yeah. program, you know, never complaining, always stepping out there, taking on so many different roles from community service to leadership in the gym to, you know, Katie, you need to sit out on this event today so someone else can go, no, Katie, never mind, you need to compete today, we need you, and she's ready. She's always mentally ready to do what we ask of her, and uh, she was the SEC all-around champion last year, so she'll be defending that title individually when she goes into the meet this weekend. The Jim Dog Show is brought to you by Melwood Springs. Melwood Springs from the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Georgia. By Macar Homes. Macar Homes, built with passion for over 50 years. Brown Arrowhead Clinic. Arrowhead Clinic, Georgia's largest spinal health care organization. By Athens Regional Medical Center. At Athens Regional, we have a specialty. You. By Golden Pantry. Golden Pantry, we've got what you need. By the John Bull stores of the Bahamas, John Bull, the shopping mecca of the Caribbean, and by Bill Hughes Honda. Bill Hughes Honda, the official car dealer of the Georgia Gym Dogs. It's official. Honda Cars and Trucks have made history. For the first time ever, Motor Trend Magazine has presented a single automaker with the top two awards. The Honda Civic and the Honda Ridgeline are named the 2006 Motor Trend Car and Truck of the Year. The all-new Civic offers a new level of performance and design. And the Ridgeline, it combines toughness, a smooth ride with innovative features. See why it's not just a truck, but a Honda. Learn about the Ridgeline and the new Civic at North Georgia's oldest Honda dealer, Bill Hughes Honda in Athens. Macar Homes is proud to announce its 50th anniversary. With passion for quality, Macar is committed to customer satisfaction before, during, and after building your home. With over 40 communities around Atlanta, Macar has a plan and neighborhood for any lifestyle. From affordable townhomes to luxurious estates. For more information, visit www.macarhomes.com. Macar Homes, built with passion for over 50 years.
Ask Suzanne, brought to you by Makar Homes. And this week's question is, who are the judges for the SEC Championship competition? And the answer is, the judges are from all over the conference, all over the country, and they're assigned by national assigners. But one thing's for sure, there will not be two judges on an event from the same state. That's Ask Suzanne, brought to you by Makar Homes. Well, that's three of Georgia's four all-arounders that we've looked at already. The fourth one is a freshman, Tiffany Tolney. And we sort of think of her as our X factor. She's either got a big score or a little bit of a problem, but she has scored a 9.9 .9 on every single event at some point during the season, and we just think the most of her and what she can give us. Right, absolutely. When she puts a meet together, she's right there in that 39.5, 39.6 all-around range, right there in the thick of it with the rest of them, and, and really can compete with anybody at this level uh, in the all-around. She uh, typically this year, though, has had one event where it, it, and it's moved around from event to event where she's had a little bit of a problem and finally put one together. I believe it was against Oklahoma where she went 39-5 at home. So we've just begun to scratch the tip of the iceberg, I think, with Tiffany. And I agree with you. I think she could be a real key not only in the SEC championships but further down the road in the national championship. And, and you know, you can't help but look at her vault and just how it's, uh, it's sensational. A one-and-a-half year Chanko twist. Uh, full twisting your Chanko, and she scored 9.975, I believe, this year, and was ranked number one at, at some point of the season, but is in the top three on vaulting. But I really like her balance beam. I think that's also one of her strongest events. So you'll see a lot of her as we move into postseason, and, and like I said, she's an X factor. We need those scores. But no one else in the country has got four gymnasts that can score 39.5 in the all-around, and that's, that is just something very special with this team but you can't leave out those other couple girls on every single event because those are key performances from us uh, Ashley Kupatz who did the all-around last year has been suffering from back problems this entire season and unfortunately is down to two or three events at the SEC championship she'll be vaulting in bars like she did all season and hope, hopefully floor exercise we need that 9.9 .9 from her on floor she's explosive on that event and I don't know, you can't, you know, again, she's just a terrific girl. Well, we're fortunate that we have the luxury this year that we didn't have last year. We, you know, Ashley was sort of forced into that all-around spot last year, even though she had some problems with her feet and with her back. But uh, we're, we've been fortunate enough that we've been able to kind of rest her and not, not beat her up so much because we have the depth and we have those freshmen that we mentioned that are doing the all-around and carrying some of the load for us. So we're very fortunate that we can do that. And then Ashley's able to really focus on those two or three events and hopefully be able to pull those nine nines on all three events. And I think she certainly, her role really is not diminished, even though it may not include one of the one of the events. Right, right. Well, we're we'll trying to sort of keep her off theme a little bit and let that back right. rest because we feel like the priority right now for Ashley and for Georgia, the priority for Georgia is to have Ashley on the floor exercise. That's five of the girls we've talked about. And then we've got, uh, of course, our senior, Brittany Smith, right. sprained her ankle a week ago. Um, missed the Michigan meet because of an ankle injury and has had a lot of setbacks this season, which has been disappointing to her. But we still are confident that she'll be able to vault for us in the SEC championship. Sure, she's she is a she's kind of a, a rock mentally, and and you pretty much know what you're going to get with Brittany, particularly on the vaulting event. And we we need to be able to depend on her because with her in the lineup, it's a it's a different makeup. You put her in the lineup, and every single person in the vault lineup that's in that lineup has gone nine nine and has the potential to go nine nine, which equates to a forty nine five for those of you that are trying to do the math and. And those are the kinds of scores, and that's the kind of depth in a lineup that you need to really push the envelope and get close to those high 197, 198 scores. That's right. If we can go 9-9 on every event, every routine, that's a 198. No one will beat us. So we're definitely looking for as many 9-9s as we can possibly get from the girls in the lineup. Um, then we've got our one-eventers. They're not necessarily one-eventers in practice, right. but for the SEC championships, our lineup on bars, uh, aside from the all-arounders, and Ashley Coupets, sixth up on bars will be... Well, you've got Nikki Childs Nikki in there. Childs. Nikki Childs. And Nikki is... Nikki's known for her line on the uneven bars and for her, the way she looks on the balance beam. And Nikki's one of those athletes that has a lot of grace, not an awful lot of power, but she what she has what she lacks in power, she makes up for in grace and, and artistry and the way that she presents her routines. And she's just a joy to watch and, and potentially a 9-9, particularly on the uneven bars where she's done that this year. She's got to stick a dismount. If Nikki can stick a dismount, then she's right in, the, right in the thick of it with everybody on the uneven bars. And she's certainly a big key for us on that event. And moving over to balance beam, same thing. You know, Nikki Childs, she's, she's had some problems earlier in the season and some falls and some breaks, and her confidence has gone down. But we're sticking with her. We know what she did last year at the National Championships for Georgia. And she will be in our beam line at, at, lineup at SECs. Uh, everyone loves her moonwalk, but I just love the fact that she has the potential to score the 9.9. .9. So we'll look for Nikki on beam. And also on, on beam, sixth, the sixth person will be Audrey Bowers. She's done a great job in pressure situations, competed for us in Utah in a lot of pressure and came through big. And, and 
and we just feel like she's really earned it with her um, numbers numbers this year. She's competed for Georgia a lot on balance beam while Brittany Smith and, and Ashley Kupetz have been out with injuries. So we're going to go with Audrey Bowers on beam for the SEC Championships. Finished up with floor exercise. We've got the four all-arounders. This is where we have, you know, some question marks still because we're not sure about Ashley Kupetz, but one freshman for sure in the floor lineup. And that's Abby Stack. Abby has really earned her way into that lineup. She's been there for us all year long. Been very consistent in spite of the fact that, you know, when the, when your freshmen come in, you have to learn the athlete. And we, you know, we've made changes in her floor lineup, and she's been very flexible and very pliable and, and, and gone in and on a moment's notice and, and made changes and been able to be very effective for us. And we feel like she's a great person to have, to have in that leadoff spot. She tumbles with a lot of difficulty and, and shows her routine very, very well and, and uh, look for big things out of Abby on the floor exercise. And that rounds it out. You know, we do have alternates on every event. Of course, we've got to be prepared for anything, and, and anything can happen. So alternates uh, on balance beam and on um, vaulting will be Megan Doolin. And, of course, the alternate on uneven bars will be Audrey Bowers. So we are ready for the SEC championships, and we are hoping to win our 15th, and hopefully we can bring you that news next week. Hi, I'm Anna, and I want to ask Brittany Smith what's her favorite TV show. Thanks for the question, Anna. That's, uh, that's an excellent question. I love Grey's Anatomy. It's my favorite TV show right now, and uh, probably because, you know, we have Dr. McDreamy on there. I mean, he's gorgeous one. If you've been injured in a car accident, make the call thousands of made before you. Arrowhead Clinics. We're the nation's largest accident treatment centers because we care about our patients. Some of the best doctors in the profession will treat your injuries immediately and will document your injuries for your insurance company. So make the call, because your health is our primary concern. Remember, having your injuries treated and properly documented are the only ways to receive a fair settlement. At Arrowhead Clinics, we treat you like a person, not just a patient. The Georgia Gym Dogs are red hot. Hot team. Cool water. Melwood Springs, now available at Golden Pantry. Golden Pantry, we got what you need. Hi, I'm Kelsey Erickson, and my golden moment is when the 2005 Georgia Gym Dogs clinched the national title. Welcome back. Joining me now is Georgia's only senior, Brittany Smith. Brittany was a junior on last year's team when we won the national championship, and we only had one senior last year, and that was Michelle Emmons. So now he, here she is a year later in the same role as the only senior. How do you think it's gone so far? I think it's been a great season. You know, we went totally undefeated, which is excellent. You know, I couldn't ask for a better way to go out, you know, at least in preseason. And, um, you know, it, it's been great. I think the team's been confident throughout the entire season and just built from, you know, every single meet. It's been, it's been fun. It has been. It's been a great year. And as Brittany said, we have gone undefeated the entire season, a lot different than last year when we had four losses. Uh, what's, how's the team handling the difference between last year having four losses and having to come back from that and this year being undefeated? Are we staying confident and keeping it, you know, in perspective? I, I think so. You know, I think every every meet that we came off of this year, you know, we did we did better and better every single time, and I think it just built our confidence more and more. And um, I think those those four losses in a row last year, you know, kind of you know gave us character, and uh, we we didn't want to go back down that road again. So <laughs> no, I think that no. helped us in a way this year. <laughs> no, we definitely didn't. Brittany, you've had just an outstanding career at Georgia, scoring a perfect ten on vaulting and floor exercise in your career, and then this year, you know, you've gotten nine nine on vaulting numerous times. 
Baldy seems to be the event that's just your marquee event for Georgia this year, and I think all our fans out there are wondering. They know about your sprained ankle from just a week ago. Wondering, are you going to be able to be ready to compete for Georgia at the SEC? It's on at least Baldy. <coughs> Uh, yes. I don't care if my ankle is broken. I have three meets left, and uh, I will be doing that, yeah. Good one. That's good to know as the coach. I'm glad you know that. I was wondering, too, by the way. No, uh, Brittany, unfortunately, has had a number of setbacks this season. A pulled groin that took her out of competition for almost three weeks, and then she got sick, and now the ankle. So that's a little discouraging, but still looking back at your total career, it's been great. And, and what have been your highlights? Um, you know, my biggest highlight really has been last year winning NCAAs. You know, I could have never imagined it being that great, and um, I hope to, to do it again. And uh, All-American was, was uh, pretty cool. Yeah, so. All-American is pretty <laughs> cool for sure. All-American, as you know, is top eight in the country on an event, so it's really hard to do, and Brittany's accomplished that, which is always a goal of all of our gymnasts individually. And then, of course, to be on a national championship team and win our 14th SEC title. Now here we go into our postseason. Our SEC championship's coming up in a week and a half. We'll be charging for our 15th SEC championship. And do you, what do you think Georgia's chances are? I think I think we have a good chance. You know, I think if we go in there and continue doing what we've been doing in the gym and in competition throughout the season, we just go in there with you know confidence, and uh, I think we have a good shot. I'm excited. I, I, I do too. I think we have a great shot. And as Brittany said, and I've said again, I want to repeat it one more time: we are undefeated and ranked number one not only in the country but also in the SEC going into the championships. One last question, Brittany: What are you going to do when gymnastics is over? Do you have any plans to stay <laughs> in the sport? Or yeah, I want to be involved. You know. Um, do what I can. I'm not sure exactly what I'll do with the team, but I do want to stay involved. And um, I have one year left of school, and then, you know, in a couple of years, I hopefully will open up my own restaurant in Atlanta. So we'll see. <laughs> so, anybody out there in the restaurant business in Atlanta, oh that's where Brittany wants to go. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Brittany, from all our fans, you know, we just want to say thank you because I've gotten tons of emails and questions about you. Everybody wants to know how you're doing, and you've been an all time favorite of Georgia Gymnastics and of mine. Thank you. We miss you. <laughs> Routine of the Week brought to you by Athens Regional Medical Center. And this week's Gym Dogs Routine of the Week goes to Georgia baseball player Bobby Felmy as he has two great catches. Looks like a 9-9 to me. That's Routine of the Week brought to you by Athens Regional Medical Center. I'm sorry, honey. I know it hurts. Oh, x-rays, they don't hurt at all. It's like a magic eye that looks inside of your body to see if anything's broken. This is where Hannah came to get her stitches out last year, remember? Of course, honey, Mommy will be with you the whole time. And remember, Mommy wouldn't take you here if it wasn't the best place in the whole world. Athens Regional Medical Center, a passion for medical excellence. Drop by drop. trickle becomes a stream flowing from the source in the store or at your door Millwood Springs Countdown to the NC2A is brought to you by Melwood Springs. And this week we do a little different twist. We show you who the bubble teams are, trying to get to that 18th spot. The top 18 teams are seated going into the NCAA regionals. And as you can see, Minnesota is at 21, desperately trying to overtake Kentucky in the 18th spot. And that's Countdown to the NC2A is brought to you by Melwood Springs. Welcome back, everyone. 
Well, we've talked about our team. Let's talk a little bit about the competition going into the SEC championships as we go for our 15th SEC title next weekend. I think, Suzanne, probably this is the, the tightest that it's ever been in terms of a top-to-bottom competition with all of the SEC teams being ranked in the top 20. What are your feelings on, on how the competition is going to play out? Well, you're right. It is close. There's so much parity today, and, and unfortunately, two falls off the same event, and it's a whole different winner. I mean, no one is good enough to be able to absorb two falls off an event. And so, you know, you go into the SEC championships, don't know what event we're going to start on. It's a random draw. Uh, so, you know, there, and there are d different advantages to starting on different events for sure. You know, we just hope that we are competing in the last rotation. That's what we want. We want to be on the floor competing for the SEC title because it will be a close competition. You've got Alabama and Florida. Florida now is ranked number two in the SEC. They've had a tremendous year this year, uh, being actually ranked in the top five in the country almost the entire season. And, of course, the entire SEC is ranked in the top 20 in the country. Right. It should be, it should be an amazing meet. And as you stated, we do not want to be on a bye in that last rotation that's one of the most miserable places to be when you <laughs> when you can't even control your fate but but it should be an outstanding meet we have gone through the SEC schedule and won all of it but we expe fully expect to see large improvements particularly from Alabama and Florida as they they typically improve as the year goes on and and uh, we look for there to be a real big tough challenge for us to uh, to get in there I look for a big challenge big competition at the bottom half of what most people would consider the bottom half of the conference the four through seven spots I think that's going to be a war it's going to be an interesting meet because you've got a lot of improvement out of teams like Auburn and Kentucky and and certainly Arkansas is doing very very well so it's going to be an interesting meet for the fans top to bottom and we just we hope it's uh, as entertaining as we anticipated it being oh and you know what we love the fact that we're going back to Alabama because last year that's where we won our national title. It's in Auburn, so it's in Birmingham. But, you know, we, we feel pretty comfortable competing over there. It's close to Atlanta. We get a lot of Atlanta fans uh, coming to Birmingham to support us. So we'll have a nice contingency of a, of a home crowd, and red and black will be strong. We look forward to seeing you next week with the results of this SEC Championships in Birmingham, Alabama on March 25th. The Jim Dog Show has been brought to you by Melwood Springs. Melwood Springs from the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Georgia by Macar Homes. Macar Homes, built with passion for over 50 years. Brown Arrowhead Clinic. Arrowhead Clinic, Georgia's largest spinal health care organization. By Athens Regional Medical Center. At Athens Regional, we have a specialty. You. By Golden Pantry. Golden Pantry, we've got what you need. By the John Bull Stores of the Bahamas. John Bull, the shopping mecca of the Caribbean. And by Bill Hughes Honda. Bill Hughes Honda, the official car dealer of the Georgia Gym Dogs.